Okay, hopefully this will work now. <clears throat> so now I can press the exit button. I don't know what that was all about. So, you notice we have this empty hand here, and a bowl, and tent, right, right? Okay, so we're going north of here. And we can't actually touch this with our bare hands. We're going to take this stick. You notice how when you can't use it on anything, it's just, it kind of looks dark. And then as soon as you can use it on something, it glows white. So that tells you when you can use an item on something. So we'll go ahead and pick it up now. You can go ahead and click on these things that sparkle so Valenies can observe them or touch them or whatever. I'm not really going to focus on that if I don't need to because I'm trying to just make this a strict walkthrough without anything extra. So go through this cave. Okay, pick up this basket. Isn't that cute? Yes, it is adorable. It's a basket, Valenice. Okay, so take the basket and click it on that eye. This allows you to look at items more closely. So we're going to click on the lid to take it off. And then while you're holding down on the basket, you're going to move your mouse around until you find that green thing. And then click on it. Now it doesn't matter what order you touch these pots in, it's whatever the last one is there is going to be the one that you take. Because the others all crack. Love her look of shock there. And then she's just kind of getting pissed. Well, she really I'm is. Getting awfully tired of this. Okay, exit the cave now. And while we're over here, let's just take a look at this. Another little oh. diagram puzzle. <clears throat> so if you remember when we looked into that. I don't even know what to call it, that basin of water thing. We saw something down there that we're, that we're going to want to get down to. So this tells you how to drain the water out so you can get down there. So it's showing you that it was full. I don't know if you caught that the statue thing had these beads on its neck. But you have to get into this order and then flip the bowl over and then it'll drain out. As simple as that. I'm going to take this kernel, if you didn't figure out that that's what it is, I'm going to stick it over here in this damp soil. I'm sure you can guess what we're going to get from this and where we're going to use it. Whoa! Oh, my! It's like a kernel of steroids. Oh, what a beauty! Yes, just take it that way. So before we go back there, let's come over here. <clears throat> and by the way, if you ever want to change your settings for the scrolling and turn it on and off here, movie size half full, you can change that here. You can also um, change the volume here. And if you press quit, you have your saving options. Or as we saw earlier, you can just press the escape button, which I did not know. So might as well just save here. And now let's continue on forward. We're gonna knock on this door over here. You don't see it has rare curiosities over the door. So you can imagine what kind of rare curiosities he has. And we will find out later. Cause he's fun to talk to. How can that be? I cannot see. And just click on him to talk. I am Valenice of Daventry, good sir. Is there a problem with your eyes? An awful rotten jackalope has swiped my glasses. I can't cope. Normally I'd trade with you, but since I'm blind, my day is through. Leave me be. I cannot see. Oh, he's really nice. We should help him. Oh, it's that guy again. He's got the glasses! <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like... 
high pitched chipmunk oh, version oh, of rude. Peter Griffin's laugh. Okay. So normally when you walk by this guy's home, I don't even know really what to call it, or if you click on it, he'll pop out and spit at you, and it just takes up unnecessary time if you don't need to, because you can't click through it. It just gets annoying after a while, so I try to avoid it when I can, just to save the time. If you would like to do it, go right ahead. Um, you'll notice a temple to your right and Valenice's left. And we're not going to worry about this right now. We are going to enter it later, but right now we're just going to ignore it. If you would like to enter it right now and uh, see what's in there, go right ahead, but just save first. <laughs> so this is our very first screen that we were at when we arrived here. So the actual quote-unquote desert mainland is actually not that big. It's only a few screens. The rest of it is just desert waste and mountain. So, okay. We're going to take this pot, dip it in this water. This is how we're going to get this nasty salt water into this bowl. Okay. And uh, something to mention too while I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> There are always certain things that you have to do in each chapter. Some things, it doesn't matter what order you do it in, and others it does. And there are some things that if you don't do it or don't collect it or whatnot, it will actually affect the game later on, sometimes to the point that you can't even finish it because you didn't get that one thing in the first or second chapter, you didn't do this one thing. So uh, just keep that in mind while you're playing as well. Yeah, Sierra's kind of known for being pretty realistic and like real life. They don't want to screw you over because you didn't get that one thing or do that one thing. Kind of screws over the rest of your life. <laughs> Which is great. I like how realistic it is, but it can get annoying too. You learn to make several save games <laughs> while playing. So yeah, anyway, um, the first time you make Valenice cry, she's not going to cry into the bowl, so you have to do it a second time, so she will. So we've got the water in there, we've got her tears in there, so now all we need is the corn in the hand. And we'll just magically go in there. She can taste it first. I have no idea if this is actually scientifically possible to combine tears, which just has more salt in it with an ear of corn to make it fresh water. I'm sure there's some, you know, magic secret voodoo in there too, but uh, I'm just curious if there are any scientists or chemists out there watching this. I'd, I'd love to hear some kind of explanation as to why they would use that in the game. Cool, so we've got fresh water now. Can even look at it to see. Wow, it even it's even blue. I forgot to show you originally when it's salt water it's green and looks nasty, but now it's blue since it's fresh water. So Okay, so we can change this right now. I'll just get that over with. It's really simple to move the beads. You just keep clicking until it goes into the spot that you want it in. Oops, gotta click on the rest to flip over the bowl. And then I believe you also need to turn the head to make it into a sun. I don't know if that's supposed to represent the water evaporating or what. But that's what you do to empty this basin and then you can go down. Now, I'm going to save here because I'm going to try to show you one of the deaths in this game. 
So, she's gonna come look at this. That looks like some kind of offering bowl. And she's right. You, which basically means you have to put something in the bowl before you can take something out. So, if you would like to see... <clears throat> Let me get that bookmark again just in case. If you'd like to see what happens just taking one, you can uh, just go ahead and watch right now. And she's like, what? What's that rumbling? I suppose you can't just take things out of an offering bowl. <laughs> yeah, they do their does in um, this game much differently than past King's Quest games and um, Quest for Glory games, so it's a little treat for you. So yeah, we need to find something that we can offer this guy. So we can take one of those pieces because you need to you have to get it to get out of the desert, so there's just no avoiding it. So, what we're going to do now is venture out into the desert. It's okay to be scared. I'm, I'm here to guide you. I won't let you down. Because if you're out in the desert for too long or if you wander too much, you will die. And it uh, doesn't help that pretty much every desert screen looks exactly the same. So it's very easy to get lost. So you should only have to click down a couple of screens. I think it might be a little bit random. So I'll click on this guy. Excuse me, sir. This random desert walker. If you uh, haven't noticed yet, he's all gray all over, which tells you he's probably a ghost. What do you want of me? I, I am Valenice of Daventry, good sir. I wonder if might tell me where I am. You are far away from life and love and hope. You are surrounded by dust. Man, he is so emo. And it is dust you shall become. Wow. You are so pale, traveler. This kind of kills my spirit. Are you? I lost my life in this cursed desert. Now I must wander, tormented by everlasting, burning thirst. Is there anything I can do? Leave this place if you can. The portal through the mountain, the mouth of the great stone head, was closed by an evil enchantress. Legend says that it can be opened. But I know not how. Go. Now. Sir! Go. This thirst drives me mad, and I know not what it will make me do. You can kind of see his eyes are a little red there. So, he's basically saying he's being tormented by thirst, and what did we just make? Water. So let's find him again. He's gotta be around here somewhere. You can get him salt water, but he gets really pissed off when you do. He's just like, ah, why did you give me that? What's wrong with you? Sir! And he like throws your pot aside. He gets so violent. So yeah, only fresh water will quench his thirst, obviously, it means salt water can't. What? One. So when you get control again, click on the pot and click it on him. I wish to give this to you, traveler. Is it truly sweet water, lady? Could it really be? Love on now, he's all polite. Truly, lady? Get me out of here. Escape this desert. I do not know how to open the portal. But 
that is something I can do. Follow me. How can she survive in the desert with that huge long dress on? I think she'd be dead already. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't be. Your gift of water has given me peace. We must hurry. I haven't much time left on this earthly plane. I wish to give you something. Okay, so you have this rope in here and what looks like a scorpion killer thingy. So um, if you don't take this, there is another way to kill a scorpion later. Taking the rope I don't think actually does anything. Um, so just in case, I mean, like I said, you can take either one. I'm going to take the scorpion killer. <clears throat> I thank you, good sir. May it help you in your journeys, my lady. Farewell. And just because we're really greedy today, we're also going to take this horn, too. Because, you know, he's not going to need it anymore. Just click it on her so she can clear it out. Oh, dear. The horn is clogged with sand. <sighs> Yummy. Oh. Oh. Being long winded comes in mm -hmm. handy sometimes. Yes, Felonies, it does. So basically, just keep clicking up until you get back to the mainland. A couple things that are different about this King's Quest game is that there are no points, um, and also there are no monsters that will randomly come upon you to fight like every the few monsters that are in this game are planned and you have to get through them so there's a little tidbit I thought I'd mention so now we're gonna go back over to this temple I'm gonna save here just in case Oops. <laughs> 